started, I've uh, been made aware of an error in one of the issue, or there was an issue with one of the WebAssign problems about uh, finding two x values that plug into a function that leads to the same y value to illustrate that it's not one to one. Uh, again, one, one particular uh, part of the problem is going to make or break whether or not you're going to get full credit for the assignment. But if there's something that's going strange with it and you're curious about it, shoot me a screenshot, shoot me an email, and see if that's what the problem is. I knew that there was an error in one of the problems. It was how it counted the wrong. So I've, I've already sent in a note to the, the company about it. Hopefully they'll get back to me today. But I know there's at least three people who have gone who have gone crazy about why is this not taking us since I know it's right and that it was correct. So. It was the, again, the last problem, the part that says find two x values that give you the same output. So if you are entering a problem or entering an answer and it's giving you an incorrect thing and you think it's right, like I said, take a screenshot of it, send me an email, and then I'll, I'll double check if that's what's going on or not. Okay, so I want to let you, I mean, let, let you know that I am aware that there was an issue. So uh, any questions at all before we keep going on with... Our quadratic functions discussion, how we started last time. All right, so uh, remember that we talked about what a quadratic function is. Remember that quadratic function means that we see a polynomial. Our highest power of x is x squared, and we want to make sure that we actually see that x squared. That's why we require the a value to be not zero. Because if a is zero, then we're going to just have a line, right? So we want to make sure we actually have an x squared term in there. We are kind of our main goal with this is to look for the vertex. Okay. So one of the reasons why we want to look for the vertex is. Notice that the vertex is where that function bottoms out. If our a value is positive, it's where the function tops out if the a value is negative. So when we get to do some application problems today, we're going to look for what a finding a maximum or finding a minimum value for the function. Okay. So that's why we care about the vertex, because again, if it's opening upward, if our, we have a u-shape upward for our parabola, then that bottom point gives us a minimum. If we've got one that's opening downward, if the U-shape's downward, then that uh, vertex is a maximum. So that's what we're going for today. All right. So to be able to find that value, we need to look, put our function into what we refer to as standard form. We talked about this right at the end of class last time. Notice that the A value is that same out A value that's on the X squared term. So again, if that a value is positive, that means we've got a parabola going this way. If our a value is negative, then we've got a parabola going this way. The h and the k that are labeled there are giving you the coordinates for the, the x, y coordinates for the vertex. Notice again, it kind of looks a little bit backward, right? We've got an x minus an h, and we pull that h off of there for the x coordinate. It's plus k, we pull the k off for the y coordinate. So over here, when we had x plus 3 on the inside, this is the example we did right at the end of class last time. When we had x plus 3 on the inside, we think of that as x minus a minus 3. And so that's why negative 3 was the x coordinate for the vertex. We have minus 2 on the end. We can think of that as plus a negative 2. And so that's why the negative 2 was the y coordinate for the vertex. So let's say if I wrote down another example. Let's say we had f of x is equal to negative 3x minus 6 squared plus 5. First, looking at that standard form, can you tell me whether the parabola goes up or down? Why is it down? Good. Remember again that this number out in front is your a value. That's the same a value that's on the x squared. Since it's negative, it flips the parabola upside down, right? So we know that this is going to be what we say opening downward. That u shape is facing down. What is the x coordinate of the vertex here? 
6, right? Remember again, it's kind of the opposite of the sign of what you have, right? Because we have x minus 6 on the inside, the x coordinate will be a positive 6. What's the y coordinate? 5. It's the same sign on the outside. Okay, so the vertex here is 6 comma 5. So if you, and again, a lot, a lot of what we're doing all of this for is just to kind of give us rough shapes of what's going on, not exact pictures, but rough shapes. If I just wanted to get a quick and dirty graph, I know that the 6, 5 is going to be where my vertex is. And you already told me that since it's negative out in front, it's going to open down. So I have to have something that's shaped this way. We could get more information to help us get a little bit better graphs. In particular, something else that we might want to do is look for where this thing crosses the x-axis. And that would help us get even a little bit better picture. But just the A value and the vertex gives us a rough idea of what the graph looks like. And then again, because it's opening upward, I can tell that this now is a maximum. So if the problem is asking me to find a maximum value, I know where to go look. It's at the vertex. And like I said, we're going to do that here in a little bit. Okay. All right. So notice in these two examples so far, I've given you the standard form. Now, it's not very likely that you're going to be given the standard form to talk about. Or to, but to start with, I mean, to be able to read those things off. So there is an algebraic process that we can use to put a quadratic function into standard form, and that process is called completing the square. Okay. I'm not going to make you complete the square on every problem, but the completing the square process is something that pops up more than throughout math. So we'll talk about how to do it. I will expect you to be able to do it on some functions. So let's talk about how that works and what we mean. So when we talk about completing, and it actually comes from the fact that uh, you're, if you think about a picture, we really are completing a square picture. That's where the name comes from. But let's think about when you multiply something out. If I want to multiply out x plus y squared, what do you get when you multiply that out? You're good. And we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, right? Notice in particular that this coefficient here, if I put the 2 and the y together, is double the y value, right? Or said another way, this y right here is half of 2y, isn't it? And then we also square that piece. So typically when we're talking about completing the square, we're trying to figure out. What do I need to add in here so that I can factor a perfect square? That's the idea. Okay. So let's look at this function that I have. I did not explain that very well, so hopefully it'll come out a little bit better in the examples. Here is my function f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. Okay. I think it's, I, I personally think it's a little bit easier to work on both sides of the equation rather than trying to work on the same side. So here's what I want to do first. Like what we did for inverses, instead of writing f of x to start with, I'll write a y. Only so that I can move that 5 to the other side. Okay. Basically, I'm just trying to clear the constant out of the way. Okay? That's all I'm trying to do. I just want to play with the x squared and the 6x piece. Okay? So notice again, like I said over here, if it's going to be a perfect square, I should see a 2y and a y squared, right? Whatever the number happens to be. In particular, this y is half of 2y. So look at this coefficient here. I got a 6, right? That would represent the 2y, right? The double the y. So what do you think the y should be if I want to add it on the end? Well, it's going to be double there. I need to divide it by 2 and then square it. So this, this number that we're going to put over here is going to be a 9. This 9 comes from 
6 over 2 squared. Half the x coefficient and then square it. Okay. What we're trying to do is complete this square. We're trying to figure out what to add on the end. Because now if you look at the right-hand side, how does that factor? Yeah, it's x plus 3, x plus 3, or x plus 3 squared. Yeah. You're rigging it so it always factors that way. It's always going to factor as x. Oops, I forgot to do something on the left-hand side. Sorry. Let me go back over up here in a second. We're rigging it so it always factors the same way. x, same sign here, and then half the coefficient here. It always is going to factor that way. I forgot to do something in the previous step. I added 9 on the right-hand side. Can I just add to one side of the equation and keep everything the same? No. I also need to add 9 to the left-hand side. What does the left-hand side become now? y plus 4. And now we can put this in standard form by subtracting your 4. I'll rewrite it as x or f of x. We don't really have to do that. I only wrote it as y so I don't get confused with my f of x thing. But now it's in standard form. And now you can tell me, the, tell me what the vertex is. What is the vertex in this case? Yeah, you're negative 3, negative 4. Good. So again, this is the process of the completing the square. Let's do another one. Let's do another one before we get to the next one that's in the packet. Let me just make up another one here off to the side. Before we do one where we've got another coefficient. Let's say we have um, f of x. Let's say our f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x um, plus 3. And we want to complete the square to put it in standard form. Again, first thing I always do is just make it a y rather than an f of x, only because I don't want to have to write f of x over and over again. If you want to leave it as f of x, that's fine. What do we do first? Yeah, move the 3 out of the way. Get that 3 out of the way. Now we look at this coefficient, which is 8. What do I do with the coefficient? Divide it by 2 and then square it, right? We divide it by 2, we get 4. Square, we get 16. If I add 16 on the right-hand side, what else better we do? Add it to the left. Good. So what does the left-hand side become? Y plus 13. How does the right-hand side factor? It's going to be X minus 4 squared, right? Because I got a minus sign on that one. We're rigging it so it factors as a perfect square every time. Okay? It's always going to be X, same sign, half the coefficient. Every single time. Okay? You don't have to think about it. Move the 13 back over. And again, I'll relabel it as f of x because that's how it was started to be labeled. It's not really a necessary step. but Again, I just like writing y rather than f of x every single time. My personal preference. You can leave it as f of x if you want to. All right, what's the vertex now? Good. This okay? Okay. So let's switch it up just a little bit. Where that the first two examples that we did had a leading coefficient, a coefficient on the x squared of 1. In this case, we've got a coefficient of negative 3 on the x squared instead. Okay? So we've got to do 
one extra step before we complete the square, and then we got to be a little bit careful. Okay, so let's talk about what I mean. So again, I'll write this as y equals negative 3x squared minus 24x minus 37. First thing we do, oh, that's the second thing we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is <laughs> add the 37, yep. Okay. You're exactly right, though. It's exactly what we want to do is get that negative 3 off of there. Okay, so... And in all the other problems that we've done so far, a whole two of them, we had a leading coefficient of 1. So I want to get that leading coefficient of 1 again. So what Joseph said, we want to factor this negative 3 off first. Okay. When you factor that off, and I'm going to leave a little bit of extra space here because I'm going to add something inside the parentheses. What are you left with? Good, yeah, it's x squared plus 8x, right? It's going to be a plus because the negative got pulled out, right? So it'll change it to a plus. We still want to complete the square. We're still going to do the exact same thing that we did in the two previous examples when we complete the square. What do I need to add in order to get a perfect square? Yeah, divide by 2 and square it. Half of 8 is 4, squared is 16. Now, just like in the previous two examples, we have to keep everything equal on both sides, right? I did something on one side, I got to do the exact same thing on the other. However, we've added 16 inside the parentheses, right? If you were to distribute this negative 3, I'd have to distribute it to the x squared, the 8x, and the 16, right? So I haven't really added 16 to this side. I've subtracted, or I've added negative 3 times 16, or I've subtracted 48, right? So on the other side, we also need to put the negative 3 times 16. I added, again, 16 inside the parentheses here. It would be multiplied by the negative 3. I have to do the exact same thing on the left hand side to keep everything equal. Okay? That's where the negative 3 comes from. Okay? So now if we simplify, this is negative 48 plus 37 is what? Negative 11? How does that factor again? Again, we know it factors as a perfect square. How does it factor? Good, x plus 4, right? It's always x. Same sign on the x coefficient, half the x coefficient. So this is plus 8, it's x plus 4. And then finally, we'll add that 11 back. So we get negative 3 times x plus 4 squared plus 11. Question on that. You want to do one more like that one? Yeah? Happy to do that. I'll make up another one. Let's say f of x equals, uh, let's do 4x squared, <coughs> pardon me, uh, let's do plus 48x and then uh, minus 2. I'm making it up. Again, like I said, the first thing I like to do is just make that a y so I don't have to write f of x every single time. If you want to write f of x every single time, go right ahead. I don't care. First step, add the 2. Good. Next step, factor out the 4. When we factor out the 4, we're left with x squared plus 12x. Good. You okay 
that part. Right? Move the constant, factor off everything on the x squared. Don't factor off the x, that's not going to help. <laughs> okay, just factor off the constant. Okay? All right, we need to figure out what to add inside there to get a perfect square. What are we going to add? 36. I heard the 36 before too. Why is it 36? What did, what did you do? How did you get to the 36? Good. Divide by 12 by 2 is 6. Squared gives you the 36. What do we need to add to the left-hand side? 36 times 4. Good. So over here, I'll do it on this side because I didn't leave myself enough room. I'll write it as 4 times 36. Again, we added 36 inside the parentheses. So when we were to distribute, that 36 would get multiplied by the 4. So I've added really 36 times 4 on the right-hand side, so I better add 36 times 4 to the left-hand side to keep everything equal. Okay. Uh, 36 times 4 is 144, plus 2 will give me 146. How does the right-hand side factor? Good. X plus 6 squared, right? We're rigging it so it factors the same way every single time. You don't have to think about it. You just have to remember what half the coefficient is. Good news is that if you're unsure, you can always multiply it back up and check, right? And then finally, we'll subtract the 146 to the other side. And that is what our f of x is equal to. So what's our vertex then in this case? Good. Negative 6, negative 146. Okay. Questions on that one? It's okay. All right. Again, I'm not going to, I'm going to expect you to know how to do completing the square, but I'm not going to expect you to complete the square on every single problem to find the vertex, or in particular to find a maximum or a minimum. Okay? So to answer some of these questions here, the ma we've already mentioned this before, the maximum or minimum value happens either where the graph bottoms out, that's a minimum value, or where the graph tops out, that's a maximum value. But either way, that, that bottom point or top point we call the vertex. So the maximum or minimum value always occurs at the vertex. I realize I have a grammar issue. <laughs> um, in the next statement. All right, so what we're interested in is finding the vertex and we're asked to find the maximum or the minimum value. So going back up to what we have in standard form, we look at this one here. We said the vertex was at negative 4 and 11, right? Where did this 4 come from? Well, the 4 came from... Going back up here, the, this 4 came from this 8, didn't it? To get that 8, we divided it by 2, didn't we? But notice also, what did we do first when we started the problem? We factored out that negative 3, right? So really, that 24, or that 8 came from the 24 divided by negative 3 when we pulled it out, didn't we? Right? That's how we figured out it was 8. We divided negative 24 by negative 3, okay? And then we divided it by 2. So the x coordinate of the vertex is always going to be minus b over 2a. We can always find the x-coordinate that way. We flip, remember we flip the sign in the middle, that's like minus, right? The sign's always opposite for the x-coordinate, right? The b value is what we're interested in to figure out how to complete the square. How do we complete the square? Well, we had to divide it by 2, but we also had to factor out the x. That's why that's in the bottom. Okay. 
So we can always figure out the x-coordinate by doing minus v over 2x. The important part is how do we find the y-coordinate? Well, if I have an x-coordinate, how do I always find the y-coordinate for a function? If I have an x, what do I do with it to find the y? Plug it back in, right? So the y-coordinate will be f of negative b over 2a. So this is a shorter method for finding the vertex without having to go through completing the square every single time. You can find the x-coordinate by doing negative b over 2a, find the y-coordinate by just plugging it into the function. And so we'll see some examples out of here in a minute. How do I know if we have a maximum or a minimum? Well, minimum looks like this, right? Maximum looks like this. What tells you it looks like this? Okay, so if you gave it positive, it looks like this if it's negative. So which one corresponds to the maximum? Negative, right? So the value is a maximum if our a value is less than zero, and it's a minimum if the a value is greater than zero. All right, <clears throat> pardon me. So let's look at this, uh, these few uh, application examples that we have. If I have an application problem for you, I will, I will just want you to use the shortcut method. If I want you to complete the square, I'll tell you to complete the square. Okay. So you'll know when to use it and when not to. Okay. We've got a quadratic function here. We're plugging in a temperature. We get out a number of bacteria. The problem asks for the temperature that yields the minimum, back, uh, the minimum number of bacteria, and then asks what is the minimum number. So let's look at the function and make sure we know which is what, which uh, part gives us which answer. What what is playing the role of x? What is the input here? T, the temperature, right? So in that first question, when I said that, what temperature? Do we have a minimum? Are we looking for an x coordinate or a y coordinate? The x, right? We're looking for the x coordinate of the vertex because that's the input, right? The output for the function is what? The number of bacteria, right? So the second question that says what is the minimum number of bacteria, we're looking for the x or y? The y. Good. We we'll look for the output, right? So again, it's important to know. Which piece is asking which, right? So the first part says temperature. We're plugging in temperature, so we need the x coordinate of the vertex. The second part says we want number of bacteria. We're getting out number of bacteria, so we want the y coordinate of the vertex. Right? But in any, both questions, we need to figure out the vertex, right? So let's figure out the verte vertex. This formula says we do negative b over 2a. What's the b value? The negative 20, it's the coefficient on the t, right? What's the a value? The 20 on the t squared, right? Agree? So we'll do negative of negative 20 over 2 times 20, which simplifies to positive 10. Or no, sorry, not positive 10, try again. The 20 is canceled, get positive a half. Sorry about that. I divided the 20 by 2 and forgot the other 20. Half what? What units are on that? It's a temperature, and it says the temperature here is in Celsius, right? So this is a half a degree Celsius. Yeah. So this is the temperature that gives the minimum number of bacteria. That's the x coordinate, right? We know when we do minus b over 2a. It gives us the x coordinate of the vertex. We've already established that the x coordinate is what's giving us the temperature. Right? 
How do we answer the second question? What do we do with this now? Good, plug a half into the function. That's exactly right. So if we do n of a half, we get 20 times 1 half squared minus 20 times a half plus 120. Oh, let's see, 1 half squared is a quarter times 20 will give me 5. Minus 10 is negative 5 plus 120 gives me 115. And this is the minimum number of bacteria, the actual minimum value. Questions on that at all? It's okay? All very excited about it, I can tell. Let's do the next one. This one's got an extra piece of it. Let's answer the second question first. And then we'll ask the other question. I answer the other question. Because it's not that it might be a bird that. You're given the height of an object. <clears throat> it asks you to find the maximum height of the object. How do you know that it's a maximum here rather than a minimum? What tells you that we're looking for a maximum? Good. The negative 16 tells you that we're looking at a maximum versus a minimum, right? It says the maximum height. So are you looking for an input or are you looking for an output here for maximum height? Output, right? Because it says it's height in terms of time, right? You plug in at time, you get out the height. Okay? So we're looking for a y value here, correct? But before we get the y value, we have to get the x value. All right? How do we get the x value in this case for your maximum? Yeah, minus b over 2a, good. What's the b value in this case? 64. The a value is negative 16. That simplifies to 2. Not that it asked for it in this particular problem, but to what? What are the units on that? Seconds, because it'd, it'd be time, right? This is two seconds. But that's not what the problem's asking for. The problem's asking for maximum height. So what do we do with this two? Plug it in. Plug it in for T. Good. Oops, forgot my squared. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so what do we get? Uh, 254? If I added right? Was that? I got 254. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, uh, 254 what? What are the units? Feet, yeah, because it says the height in feet, right? So the maximum height is 250 feet. Is that okay? Now, I didn't answer the first part of the question. It didn't have anything to do with the vertex. It does have something to do with stuff that we're going to do here in a little bit in the next section which is why I'm going to go ahead and do it. The first part says, find the time at which the object strikes the ground. Well, how high above the ground is the object when it hits it? Zero, right? The object would be zero feet above the ground, right? Okay. So if I want to know when it strikes the ground, we need to find... when the height is equal to zero. And this is something we're going to talk about, like I said, in the next section quite a bit. Actually, the next few sections, we're going to talk about this quite a bit. And looking for where a graph crosses the x-axis, where the function is equal to zero. 
So we have negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 190 is equal to zero. Should try, probably try to factor this if we can. It's a lot easier to solve it if we can factor it. Can I factor out the negative 16? Does 16 go into 190? It doesn't, right? So probably not the best chances of this factoring. If we don't know how it factors, we can always use what to solve a quadratic equation? What can we always use? Quadratic formula, right? Let's remember our quadratic formula. X equals what? Negative B. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Now that's something that you should know. It's one of those things that you should know well enough that if somebody asks you 10, 10 years from now, what's the quadratic formula, you should just be able to spit it out. It's one of those things you should be able to recite. All right. So we've already identified the A and the B. The C is the constant, right? So you would have x is equal to negative 64 plus or minus square root of 64 squared. <coughs> Pardon me. Minus 4 times negative 16 times 190 all over 2 times negative 16. That looks like a nice job for a calculator. Before we type this in the calculator, we get two solutions, right? We get a plus or a minus. Which one doesn't make sense in the context of this problem? The minus doesn't make any sense, right? Because I wrote x. I don't really mean x, do I? I mean t, don't I? t represents what in this problem? Time, right? We didn't shoot the object off fast enough so it to go backward in time, right? So our time needs to be positive. So if you're going to type this in your calculator, you really only need to worry about the positive because the negative is not going to make any sense in the context of the problem. And hopefully I've talked long enough that somebody got the answer for me. Apparently not. Number is a little bit too big for me to do in my head for this one. Actually, I think in this one you do want the negative because the bottom is negative. Now that I, I think I lied, I think you want to do the minus because that minus is the denominator. Forgot about that. I think you do want to do the minus. Now that we're talking about it, sorry about that. You should be able to go up and grab the entry if you're on your calculator. Sorry about that. I did. I forgot about the negative the denominator. We do want to do the minus and not the plus. If we do the plus, you're going to get a negative. I actually want the negative answer on top. 
Because I got a negative answer on bottom. Yeah, yeah. Did you get one? Okay, yeah. 5.984. And that'll be seconds in that case. Yeah, we do want the negative one. I have said it backwards. I forgot about the negative sign of the denominator. Yeah, so we want to do the negative 64 minus that part. If you're unsure, do both of them. One will be positive and one will be negative. The negative one should have been relatively small negative, like one and a half-ish. I was estimating in my head. Okay. All right. So this last part, any questions on why we set it up that way? Let's do it that way. <laughs> All right. This last part here is just summarizing what we just talked about with this alternative method for finding the minimum and maximum values. It's just summarizing what we just talked about before. The just to emphasize, the maximum or minimum of value occurs at negative b over 2a, and the value is f of negative b over 2a. And again, just to re-emphasize why that's written, there's not a space there to fill that in, at least on my, <laughs> my screen. Just to re-emphasize why it works out that way. Remember, our first step was to factor out the A. When you factor out the A, you have to divide the B by the A. That's what factoring out does, right? It takes it out, takes that factor out, and divides by it. So I'd have a B over A left. To complete the square, you then divide it by 2. So that's why it becomes B over 2A. And it's negative because it's always the opposite sign. By the way, notice that that negative B over 2A should look familiar. It's whoops, right here in your quadratic formula, isn't it? For a quadratic function where you look for where it crosses the x-axis, it's the vertex splits it in half. So if you know where a, if you know where a quadratic function crossed the x-axis, you know where its vertex is. It's halfway in between. That's what that says. All right, let's do one more example like this. I'll let you work on it, and then we'll chat about it. So work on oh, another typo. I should read for these things before I print them out. I should say United States. <laughs> work on that one for a minimum. Or for a minute, sorry. <laughs> work on that for a minute or two, and then we'll chat.
So the first question I want to ask, how do I know that I have a minimum versus a maximum? What tells you that it's a minimum versus a maximum? Good, exactly. So it's a minimum because the coefficient on your t squared is positive, right? A positive coefficient on your t squared tells you that your parabola is opening this way, so the vertex is at the bottom. Okay, so that's how I know it's a minimum. What is it asking for? Is this problem asking you for an input value or an output value? An input. How do you know it's an input? So what, what are the inputs here? Time, the years, right? The outputs are mountain bikes, number of mountain bikes, right? So it's asked in what year, so it's asking me the input, it's asking me the x coordinate, right? So how do we find the year that corresponds to that? What do we do? Good, negative b over 2a. What's the value for b in this case? Okay, negative 2.265, and the A value is, good, 0 0.337. And what did you get when you put that in your calculator? Six-ish, yeah, 3.36-ish. Now, it does say in what year. They tell you that T equals 3 corresponds to 1983. And we get t point equals 3.36, so it must still be in 1983, right? I tell you that t equals 3 is 1983, so it must still be in the same year, right? Because we're just a little bit bigger. As a matter of fact, somewhere about a third of the way through the year, so a little bit over a third of the way through the year, so what, sometime early May? Is what that would represent? Right, April will be through April will be third of the year, or a little bit past, so sometime early May, probably. Does that make sense? All right. So there's a couple more problems in the packet. I'll leave for practice. On Friday, we'll do a quiz. Your